Okay, hello. They actually respond. Wow. Um, so, who was at my talk yesterday? Okay. Where yesterday it was all slides, this is almost no slides. So, a lot of code. Um, it's about PS Script Analyzer. Who has never worked with it before? Who has never heard of it before? Okay, this is going to be fun. Because I heard about it but never worked with it before. I just uh, invoked the script analyzer rules and do all the defaults. I'll show you in a few minutes. And that is what we included in our uh, continuous delivery pipeline. So I'm testing for all the default rules, not knowing what the rules are. Only when something fails, then I see what the rule is. Uh, but then I wanted to expand on this, specifically help. Writing PowerShell help for functions. Who does it consistently? More than two hands. Wow. Okay, uh, I don't. And that's a bad thing. Because if code goes to production, it kind of needs help. So, or it needs documentation. So, when I put in this session, that's uh, a thing with me. I think of sessions, I try to create the basics, and then put in a session for an event. After it is accepted, I got my end date. By that time, I need to have something working. Um, I didn't do that in the past, and I had not working demos. And ever since I got an end date, because hey, the event is at a specific date, uh, I realized that I actually finish stuff. So the agenda, why use it? What it does? Uh, PowerShell, well, I'm now using PowerShell. And I'll tell you a little story about something I found out on Thursday when I came in. And how I spent this morning and an hour last evening. The defaults in the build-in and how you can expand. You can create your own rules in PowerShell. And I'll tell you how we integrated with this, this in a continuous pipeline. So, why use it? In my opinion, that's it. Pretty simple. And I've got a little bit of OCD. I like consistency. If I've got something on the left, I want something on the right. Um, optimized code is, in my opinion, always better. If I, uh, I had to review a script of 240 lines of code, all filled with aliases. I see some people you have been there before. Um, so apparently Ed Wilson has written a little script that uses the AST, which we are going to use. Um, read the script, parse it, get all the aliases, replace the aliases with the proper command, and then you can, can start troubleshooting, because 240 lines of code, I couldn't find the error. It was a logical thing, but my mind is converting all the aliases to commands again and again, and oh, I don't know that alias, look it up, okay, next one, next one, etc. My mind is so busy doing other things, that actually troubleshooting becomes impossible. So, that's a little bit of optimized code. And, well, what does PS Script Analyzer do for me? Again, easy peasy. For me, that's my goal. And combine this, and that's another session I'm currently working on. Uh, combine this with tester testing of your code. And then you can start, hey, this is uh, absent. Okay, this is present, but let's say the help is present, but uh, somebody forgot the synopsis. It's kind of important for, uh, for help, the synopsis, description, example. You, who loves examples in PowerShell, by the way? Even Kenneth? Wow, you read help? Uh, 
So that's about almost all my slides. So with me, there are two kinds of sessions. All slides or a lot of demo. Well, first, I came in on Wednesday evening. I missed the zoo because I was a little bit tired after working and driving for three and a half hours. So I prepared a session. And what I did was, apparently weeks before, is I wanted to create my own rules in PS Script Analyzer. And so I got to the uh, GitHub repository from the Bowser team, looked into the Script Analyzer, and hey, there's a rules directory there. And there are CS files. Hey, that's a rule written in C sharp. Oh, damn it. Oh, you see it. So, I was, I'm still learning C sharp on that. So, I looked at it and I was like, well, if I copy paste this, I can edit it, I can work with it, and it will probably work. And surprise, it did. So, that's not something I would want to do. I'm a Bowser guy, not, not a .NET guy. Sharp guy. So I pre prepared a demo, and my one mistake was when you read the fucking help, it tells you that you can expand and write your own rules in PowerShell. Yeah, so I had a total demo ready to go, and then it was oops. So that was on Thursday morning, where David Wilson told me that uh, yeah, you can use your own uh, PowerShell file. Oh, that's useful. So last evening I did one hour of reading, and this morning I woke up at 6, I was here at 7, and from 7 till 10 I wrote... a few rules. Specifically, those. How many? Yeah, 70. This is based uh, primarily on stuff done by uh, Thomas Rayner. He's a Canadian Pauto MPP. And he put his stuff on GitHub. And it works. But he didn't have anything for help. So I used his stuff as a base template. Uh, I had one working, which is this one. Use help in function, I called it. So, that's it. This is uh, all the code you need to test if help is in the function. What it does, when you do invoke script analyzer you give it the path of a directory which you can recurse for scripts no. that is something I was still working on uh, get it? I'm gonna enter a bug that one doesn't work so um, and you can set a custom rule path. So in this case, I would, would love to have entered this path and all the rules in there, apply them. So what the invoke script analyzer does is it provides a an AST uh, object, the abstract syntax tree. Basically it is, uh, it is what makes PowerShell understand PowerShell. When you go in there, it has a function definition. Inside the function definition, there is everything that, that can be included in a function. A parameter, the title of the function, but also the processing block and the begin block, etc. Well, okay, help. Apparently, 
is also one. But the what the function object has a method get help content. In this case, if this one has no output, this will be empty. Check for that. If it's empty, then the rule is in effect. There's no help. And provide this type of object as output. That's kind of important here. That's why also very well documented, apparently. When you read the help, you know. But, um, it has to have a script analyzer diagnostics record object as output. What you can also do is do a PS custom object as output, but with these property maps. We'll try the chart. Well, this is the function object. When I check for not the help, but I can assume the help is already there. I want to check if there's a synopsis in the help. Oh, check if the property not equals no. So what does a help object look like? Well, this utterly useless. So that's it. For all those properties, you can test on. And what you will notice is that for all of these, it's pretty similar code. So once you figure it out, copy paste, replace a few values, done. Now, in the past, I had a little fun project uh, called an Active Directory Health Check. Uh, Carl Webster, an American, has taken over the project. And He's done it for more than two years now. So I was wondering, did he do a good job? So when we take a look at this file, it is 4,000 lines of code. So there's a lot in there. What I want to know is only looking at the default rules of the uh, script analyzer. What will it do? Well, let's first look, take a look at what kind of rules there are. That's always useful. Get script analyzer rule will give you a list of the rules that are natively available in script analyzer. So you can also say, hey, I want this rule, but not that rule. That will include an exclude parameter. Let's do a test. Good. Apparently, there's some feedback. Well, no, yes and no. It is a little bit harsh, but he has made like 10 mistakes, let's say mistakes, but uh, 10 ways of he, how he does it. The script works, so it's not a mistake technically, but uh, it can improve, but he has done it consistently, which is a good thing. The moment he learns to do it differently now, he will do it consistently from that point on. What I would love in the PS script analyzer is a fix it parameter. You're laughing, but this is more in an educational way. You can uh, verify. And I think that's, for most of people, better. Because in that case, you would always include the, hey, just fix it parameter. And you won't learn anything. So, how many?
things can I report based on the default rules? 93. Uh, one of my other play projects was Oh, there we go. Already have you in this parameter. One of the other play uh, projects was a Trello PowerShell module. Trello. That's uh, still on the my maintenance. And apparently, I had 19 issues here. And you'll see that also I am quite consistent in my mistakes. This is the beginning. This is, um, well, let's take a look for all the help stuff I've done. Only for my Trellis module. <coughs> Functionality is missing in help. Hey, and I've done it pretty consistently. <coughs> Description is missing in the new token. Uh, function, and that's apparently a mistake in mine. Uh, it outputs two times, so that's also why I haven't posted it on the internet yet. I created it this morning, I still want to test it. But now we get to the more interesting parts. Developers write code, they change code. In my experience, what they don't do is update help. So let's say they change a parameter name. Then you ought to update the help, right? So in different, I'm thinking about different phases in the continuous delivery pipeline. Uh, for example, the developer checks code in. He changes something and, oh, wait a second. You forgot to rename it in the help. If it's his job to change the help, sure. If it's somebody else's job, I want a certain flow behind it so that that person gets a warning like, hey, the code has changed, please change it in the help. This is quite a bit more um, complicated. First, you have to find the parameter block. Because there, that's why the parameters are hiding. One of my scripts has a dynamic parameter block, so I also want to find that, just in case you have it. Then you get the command element. The entire function block. That's more for each, and now we get to the interesting part. All the different kinds of parameters. Get first the parameters that are in the help, the ones that are documented. Then you get the static and the dynamic parameters. And then it becomes pretty easy to compare. This thing has took me, me two hours to write. Basically, first I've written a test for get the dynamic parameters. Just look for them. If they're there, great, then I've got that piece of code ready. Static parameters, same thing. And comparing, that's a basic PowerShell skill. Kind of everybody needs to know how to do that. This monster, system.management.automation.language, is the thing you want to look at, and it's documented.
if my internet is working, so yeah. For example, in the comment help info class, the properties are documented and you know what you can use. Purely looking at the documentation. My preference is using IntelliSense because it will pop up and I, I can choose. I'm kind of lazy like that. But when you look at the main space for PowerShell itself, these are all things you can use in your PS Script Analyzer for testing. Testing anything you like, and if something is present. If you want uh, to test for, let's say, uh, um, I have a customer that uh, only wants approved verbs, which is a good thing. You can test for that. Uh, the AST also has a list of approved verbs, I believe. Well, if you want to know what are approved verbs, how do you do that? Is there a command for that? Get verb? Yeah, okay. Get verb. Yeah, okay. When you pipe that to get member, type name. Selected Microsoft PowerShell commands member definition. Okay. Useful. Sounds like. When you look for PowerShell approved verbs, you get quite a few. Not too bad, I have to look for that, but uh, what I'm trying to find is the .NET class, which tells me what are the approved verbs. That's kind of what I want to use in my uh, yeah, in my test, in my uh, role. Uh, you can also use the get verb uh, command in there because hey, it's PowerShell and get verb is one of the base commands that are that's available on any system with PowerShell. So the idea here is uh, dive into the uh, AST and when you start doing that, it is uh, quite a learning curve. So what I can recommend is, again, the stuff from Thomas Rayner. Uh, he has blogged about it. Uh, on the Hey Scripting Guy blog, there are articles from multiple people about the ASD. Also from the Bowser team. Uh, and specifically for the script analyzer, avoid my mistake. Read the help. Is there anything you would like tested? What? My new module? Oh shit. Because <laughs> I've actually done that and yeah. <laughs> uh, Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, let's see how we do that. This is just quick and dirty, so beware. Well, like I said, I'm quite consistent, so first let's do what? Any surprises here, maybe? <laughs> in general, first I will write working code, and because it's not in production yet, before I post it online, there will be help in there, sure. But 
Yeah, that's what they all say. Uh, no. um, let's do it quick and dirty. Oh, even better. I almost forgot that. Uh, there are I found online a few uh, examples. For example, uh, about casing. Yeah. There we go. Avoid improperly capitalized function names. So there's somebody that has written a rule to test for that. Okay. Well, both full name. Oh, sorry. Select first one. Pipe to clip. Here we go. Let's see what it does. Naturally, let's apply it to an Active Directory help you. Because hey, what could possibly find? Oh, by the way, I'll show you the speed of the thing. It's done 4,000 lines of code. I was amazed by this. <coughs> so, this is uh, something, one of the rules I found just by doing a GitHub search. Go to GitHub, type in PS Script Analyzer, hit enter, and you get a few rules. One I found very useful is This one, do not use unassigned variables. I have a tendency to not clean up my code. And it will still work, because hey, the variable isn't used. But it's utterly useless. So it's a best practice to have some clean code. Um, Use security critical for script lock parameters. Any idea what it means? Okay, let's take a look. What it does. Avoid using parameters that accept the script lock without specifying. So it's a security thing it checks on. It wants to secure a script block. Another one I kind of want to do because when I deliver code to production, I want to remove all these things. That's also my to-do list. So, as of this morning, when I started writing my uh, rules in PowerShell, I made more leeway than in two weeks before. And I'm very charmed by this. So, I immediately got on my backlog and made a little to-do list. And this is something... Well, before the 21st of May, the help stuff will be online. And I hope more. So the message I want to give you with this is when you use the AST, you can dissect 
file shell. You can dissect the file tree in script. And each and every component you can test on. Um, I do have to ask, Kenneth, default values for parameters. Has that been included in the ASP? Yeah, it wasn't before, but... Okay, so that's also one thing I found that my students pull out. Uh, they changed the property from ma uh, mandatory from false to true. Then the default value you give it is, it's useless. So why have it in there? I kind of want to test on that. So that's one of my things. Uh, that's why you're below on the to-do list, because hey, the script still works. Um, are there any questions? <laughs> Let's take a look, shall we? <laughs> and somebody immediately leaving. Who oh, was that? <laughs> you heard a valid point, actually. Uh, okay, uh, so get module version available. Script and log. Where is it? Oh, there we go. Much of this. No PS1 file. Yeah, sorry, don't know. Any other questions? Uh, I had. Oh, sure, you can. <laughs> Once you know how it's really easy. Um, no. Um, because I want you to be able to change this. I'm not perfect, I can make mistakes. So, if I make mistakes, then you can either complain or you can fix it. Uh, oh, uh, apparently David Wilson who had a talk uh, earlier this morning and the VS Code will automatically fix uh, aliases to be used. So that's a pretty neat feature. And I'm going to ask him how he did that. So, if there are no more questions, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, 
I will be writing a blog article about this step by step how I came to this and I'll skip my mistakes. Um, that post will be online on Friday. Next week. So, thanks.